So now in FAR, what's up with foreign currency accounting where you have to convert foreign financial statements back into U.S. what we call foreign currency translation? We looked at foreign currency transactions, importing and exporting and hedging, and we saw what type of questions you might see there. Now it's foreign currency translation and what they call remeasurement because sometimes financial statements need to be converted from a foreign currency to the U.S. dollar. And this is a lot more theoretical than what we saw with the foreign currency transactions. There's a lot of terminology that you got to get familiar with, but that's really the hard part. So on slide three, foreign currency conversion occurs when a domestic entity must convert financial statements of a subsidiary that's already expressed in a foreign currency, now they have to convert it into U.S. dollars. For example, Tesla, a U.S. firm, owns a Japanese subsidiary named Topo. Topo is a Japanese subsidiary of Tesla. They keep their books in yen, the Japanese currency, and their financial statements are in yen. Since they're owned by Tesla, though, Tesla must ultimately convert Topo financial statements from yen to dollar. So that's one use of foreign currency conversion. When you have a foreign subsidiary and they keep their books in a foreign currency and you have to convert them from foreign to domestic. Another use of foreign currency conversion on slide four is where an entity has an equity method investee. So maybe they're not your subsidiary, but you are an equity method investor, and they're your equity method investee, and you need to report the net income that they earned on your income statement. So now Tesla owns just 22% of Topo, not the whole thing. So now we have an equity method investment here. If Topo earns 100000 of net income, Tesla's share is 22000 and we would make that famous equity method journal entry where Tesla would debit investment in investee, 22000 and income from investee, 22000 And that would be pretty easy if Topo kept their books in U.S. dollars. But what if Topo kept their books in yen and they earned 100,000 yen and not 100,000 U.S. dollars? Now what would we do? if we were the parent company, if we were Tesla, the investor. We need to make that equity method journal entry, but how do we do it? How do we do it if they earned 100,000 yen? So that's where we're at. Now go to slide five. That's why we have to learn something about foreign currency conversion and remeasurement. So on slide five, we know that the yen is the local currency of Japan. And we know that Topo is a Japanese subsidiary of Tesla, and Topo keeps their books in yen. That means Topo records debits and credits in yen, not U.S. dollars. And Topo's financial statements are prepared in yen. To read the financial statements of Topo, you wouldn't even know that they were even owned by a U.S. entity because the financial statements of Topo are in the local currency yen. And now they need to be converted into what's called the reporting currency on slide six. So another key term here, the reporting currency. We go from local currency to reporting currency, which refers to the parent company's currency, Tesla. Tesla's currency is the reporting currency. Tesla, as the U.S. parent, reports in U.S. dollars. Therefore, Topo's reporting currency is the U.S. dollar, even though their local currency is the yen. The reporting currency is the final or consolidated currency, where the consolidated financial statements will be reported. In Topo and Tesla's case, the reporting currency is the U.S. dollar. Now, here's another key term, the functional currency. So, if Tesla subsidiary Topo is located in Japan, and if they keep their books in yen, then it appears that the yen, the local currency, 
is the recording currency for topo but we know it's not the reporting currency because that would be the us dollar but it would be the recording currency the local currency the yen but the question is is the yen also the functional currency for topo and i told you it's the vocabulary that'll kill you in this area harder than the numbers so let's start at the top here if tesla subsidiary topo is located in japan and they keep their books in yen it appears that the yen the local currency would be the recording currency for topo but the question is is the yen also the functional currency for topo why do we care because the functional currency concept is key to understanding how the financial statements are converted from yen to US dollar so we really care here what is the functional currency for topo is it the yen or is it the dollar and they'll have to tell you enough information for you to know what the functional currency is so on slide eight now we know the yen is the local currency for topo as Japanese subsidiary of Tesla but is the yen topos functional currency functional currency refers to the currency of the primary economic environment in which the foreign entity operates and in which the foreign entity generates their net cash flows you might automatically think for topo that it is the Japanese yen the local currency would be their functional currency but not so fast the functional currency concept we said is key to understanding how the financial statements are going to be converted from yen to dollar so knowing what the functional currency is is very important for the subsidiary topo so at slide nine for Tesla's subsidiary topo what are the potential functional currencies for topo well we said it could be the Japanese yen the local currency or it could be the US dollar the final reporting currency it could even be a different foreign currency altogether a foreign currency other than the yen or the US dollar but that's rare but it's possible I want you to know that that is possible so on 10 quite likely that the functional currency for topo will be the local currency the yen it's quite likely when topo's operations don't depend much on the parent company Tesla so topo will be using the well you can say that topo's currency their functional currency is the yen as long as it tells you on the exam that they don't depend much on the parent company Tesla that their operations are integrated within Japan if that's the case then you can say that the yen is the functional currency so go to 11 Japan's local currency might be the functional currency for topo if the operations and cash flows of topo if they occur in Japanese yen that means sales are denominated in Japanese yen contracts for sales for topo if they're denominated in Japanese yen if purchases are denominated in yen that's evidence that they function in the end but if sales and purchases were denominated in US dollars for topo then that's evidence that they function in the US dollar you see now if topo's purchases are denominated in yen and their sales are denominated in yen that's evidence that they function in the yen especially if they use a Japanese bank not a US bank especially if key topo employees are Japanese citizens not US citizens this would be evidence that topo functions on a daily basis in the yen therefore if we can conclude that for topo their functional currency is the yen that's important we said because the functional currency concept is key to understanding how the financial statements are going to be converted from yen to dollar so we're, we're going to believe we're going to try to believe that the yen is the functional currency for topo because they have all of their transactions denominated in yen and all their key people live in Japan so then on slide 12 the final step before we can declare the yen the functional currency the final step is to make sure that the local currency is not experiencing hyperinflation 
which is equal to 100% inflation over the past three years. And the, the Japanese yen is not experiencing hyperinflation. But on the CPA exam, they'll tell you. If they happen to tell you that the currency is experiencing hyperinflation, then you tell them that the local currency there, the yen, could not be the functional currency if it's experiencing hyperinflation. That would disqualify the local currency from being considered the functional currency, you see. And then the functional currency would have to be Tesla's currency, the U.S. dollar. So what are the key terms that we saw so far on slide 13? We got the functional currency. We got the reporting currency. We got the recording currency, the local currency. These are all terms we might not have even known 15 minutes ago. Now we've seen them all. So for Topo, the local currency is the yen. That's their recording currency. We want to know if it's their functional currency. We know it's not their reporting currency because the reporting currency is the final reporting currency of the parent, which is the U.S. dollar. All right, 14. A U.S. firm has a foreign subsidiary. When converting foreign financial statements of the subsidiary to the U.S. dollar, which of the following describes the reporting currency? Not the functional, but the reporting currency. Right, the currency of the U.S. parent is the reporting currency. C is the answer. All right, how about 16? A U.S. firm has a foreign subsidiary. When converting foreign financial statements of the subsidiary to the U.S. dollar, the currency in which the foreign entity's general ledger is maintained is referred to as That's the recording currency. That's where they debit and credit in yen in the case of Topo. That's the recording currency. Notice there's a difference between the recording currency and the reporting currency. And there often is. The recording currency is probably the local currency. The reporting currency is probably not the local currency. It's probably the U.S. dollar. All right, 18, when converting foreign financial statements to U.S. dollars, the currency of the primary economic environment in which an entity operates and generates net cash flows is referred to as functional currency, letter A. Hey, it's Darius. If you didn't pass far last time around, you were probably on the wrong road. Why not get on I-75 and take it to your next pass? Most of my students found me just the same way that you did through YouTube. They were with Becker or they were with Wiley or they were with somebody and it didn't work out as planned. They saw a couple of my videos and they said, you know what? There is a different way to learn. I don't have to memorize everything. As long as I learn something about everything, I'll feel more confident. If you have any questions, after you go to cpaexamtutoring.com, just click Ask Darius, and then scroll down, and then hit me up. Ask me anything. You can check out the frequently asked questions, and then right here, you can hit me up, and then I'll get back to you.